have on the show. Wake up and let's go to the Mind This Morning Show. Good morning, Mindless Morning Show fans, listeners, viewers. I'm here with my co-host Dakota, and we have the most special guest we have ever had on Mindless Morning Show, uh, because this is not only just a, an amazing and wonderful lady. Yeah, she she has been uh, our, our publicist, our little like PR agent, helping us get these other incredible guests that you've seen on our show and. She is basically the real brains behind the mindlessness. Everybody, welcome Eileen Shapiro. Hello. <laughs> How are you guys? <laughs> We're doing great. So, there. and, and I, I guess I should uh, kind of go down this like long list here of credentials of what an amazing like writer you are. Cause you do, you write for like over 50 publications. You're the best rock star journalist, basically. Like you, you got it all. <laughs> I'm starting to really like you guys. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> believe me, we love you. Yeah, Dakota uh, doesn't know yet, but he loves you. Okay. Well, I mean, this not. I mean, today was kind of the first I really did anything. Josh was telling me about it, and I started looking into it more, and I was like, "Yo, she seems so cool." <laughs> Dakota, <laughs> when I get done with you, you're gonna love me. You're not gonna have any choice. <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So, how did you get into like all the all the writing and and what you did? Like, is this you always like writing as a kid or? Nah, hated it. <laughs> but um, it was really an accident. So, I used to be a Star Trek fan, and I was going to nursing school. And in order to study, I always had to have the TV on, and they were doing reruns of Star Trek. Okay, and <laughs> I had this fangirl crush on Leonard Nimoy or Spock. I'm not sure which one, but one of them. <laughs> and there was a store in the city called the Federation Trading Post. So I found it. And the owner, he was, he was actually edited, the editor for a magazine called the Star Trek Giant Poster Book. And we started talking and we became friends. And I just started writing for it. And then um, Paramount and Ballantine Books said, listen, we need a, a Star Trek medical reference manual. And since I was the only one that had any medical knowledge, uh, by the way, I was a, like a first year nursing student, <laughs> I got to write it. So that's really how it started. That's awesome. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> that is really cool. And are you, are you, you're clearly content with the transition from nursing school to, to like publicize <laughs> badass, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I was a nurse for about three minutes, and I really hate You know what? Your parents say you have to go to college, right? Yeah. So I said, yeah. all right, I might as well go to college for like a profession. Damn. So nursing school, that, you know, but I, I hated it. I Like I said, I did it for three minutes, and I was done. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that, that that's a shame. But I mean... Nursing is is definitely a very demanding job, and yeah. I don't know that you would have had many celebrities just sitting on the the beds, nursing beds, like to take exactly. care. <laughs> so I mean, it, it it's definitely been a lot cooler for you. Now, have you always been like a rocker chick, or is this something that kind of came along? Totally. No, uh, okay. I was I was going to concerts from the time I was maybe I don't know seven eight years old. I used okay. to. Drag, I used to drag my grandmother, my great grandmother, actually. I, used to, I, used to, I want to see this concert and she would take me. So, well, I, yeah, there's always some, a rock. Always. Some badass grandma right there. <laughs> or what, she, what, what your first was concert was? Oh, my first concert, maybe Steppenwolf. Ooh, oh, that's a okay. Good one. Nice. So, yeah, we, we, I know. It, you, you make it pretty known that Adam Ant is your all-time favorite. Totally. And where where does that stem from? What, like, what makes him your favorite? You know what? I don't know, because I really don't like his music all that much. But the thing is... <laughs> I wasn't expecting that answer. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> the thing is, you know, when, when you're kind of growing up and hanging out in the 80s, I mean, he was all over the place. And then he disappeared. 
And it was the, I think it was the intrigue, like, where'd he go? And then all of a sudden he reappeared. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so, but there were three of them. I liked Rick Springfield. I had a bucket list, Rick Springfield, Adam Ant, and Billy Idol. Okay. So, and kind of Alice Cooper too, but, and I wound up meeting every one of them, but I don't know. There's like a place in my heart for Adam, because I know him, you know? Met right. him, hung out with him interviewed him like so how how are, is he in real life in comparison to like his his stage his stage presence he's amazing he's a very gentle kind man and he is um really smart really smart and he's just he does he goes like above and beyond like if there are fans that can't afford concerts he just lets them in I mean, wow. he's cool like that. Awesome. So he was everything, everything you hoped him to be, and then more. He was, and more, <laughs> and more. That's awesome. That that's a solid individual, and I give kudos to any artists that are like that because that's that's cool. That's really so cool. cool. Yeah. So I, cool. I, you know, you always get some of those uh, artists that are like, "Oh no, you have to pay this, that, and the other," and like they. I mean, obviously, you gotta like. They got to make some money because most of the record labels, they take a majority of what they make, but. Totally, totally. You know, a lot of the artists of the 80s got stuck in that record label nonsense, mm -hmm. you know, and lost a lot of money or got ripped off for a lot of money. He was one of them. He was one of them. Um, I don't think anybody really made all that much money, you know, like people think they did. Yeah. I don't think they did. But, you know, all, all of the people that I am, um, represent had some kind of issue and all of the people i've interviewed had some kind of issue and i've interviewed yeah. a lot of people that you have <laughs> yeah and i mean that that's something uh i have learned along the way interviewing the people you, you've sent us is that musicians have it a lot harder than is portrayed and that's a shame i i really feel for them because i mean they're they're great they they're, yeah, they're like the, the soul of the world and, and the people I listen to music Soul every day. Soul of the world, I like that. I might steal that. Soul of the world. <laughs> Have it. It's all yours. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't copyright anything yet. Um, <laughs> so now I'll give you credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> you you have, I, like you said, interviewed countless countless people, and, and not just musicians, like all sorts of celebrities. Like who mm -hmm. who are like some of your like most memorable ones for you? You know what? I had great experiences with every single person except one that I've interviewed. Oh, and, now, now I'm interested. Well, let's bash them. Come on, here we go. <laughs> All right. So the one, you know, I write for a really huge gay magazine. Yeah. And oh, yeah. from that magazine, I mean, I interviewed Diana Ross, Brooke Shields, Emma Stone. I mean, huge, huge, huge. Boy George, huge people. So this Love nobody, George. this nobody's PR contacted me and said, listen, my client is going to be in the Grand Old Opry. I said, all right, you know, she's nobody, whatever, but I'll do it. She was a lesbian, so she kind of belonged in the book. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. And the girl, she was a, a country artist. And you know, when you interview someone, the first kind of thing you, you want to get, you want to rapport with, so you like you're hoping to have a rapport with them of yeah. some sort. So, you know, I said, hello. And I, I asked her, I said, so what influences your music? And her answer to me was, I don't want to talk about me. I said, excuse me. <laughs> she said, yeah, I just want to talk about my music. So I'm thinking to myself, did I word the question wrong? <laughs> so I said, all right, what inspires your music? And she said, I don't really like this interview. I said, I'll tell you what. You know, this was after like 15 minutes. I said, I'll tell you what, when you really want an interview, you give me a call. And I hung up on her. And um, her PR person was like devastated. She was like the worst. Just everything I asked that she was like so difficult like someone's doing you a favor right, you know yeah. Yo. yeah that's that's insanity <laughs> like, and i don't that's... remember her name and i'm glad i don't remember her name and <laughs> you know but i mean usually the bigger the people the better they are 
I mean, the, the, the more, the easier they are to interview, the more they want to tell you. I, I will say Le Leland Sklar, he was <laughs> one of the most down to earth people we've, we've spoken with. He just so laid back. <laughs> this is crazy. You want to know what a nice guy he is? I'll tell you. So he just did a big party in LA. The Su Wang, uh, one of my one of my clients, she's a designer, and we had this big party, and we invited all these rock people. And Leland was recording that day with um, either Judy Owens or Melissa Etheridge, just somebody. And he was all the way in Pasadena, and he left the recording studio, drove an hour, came to say hello to me because he never met me in person and then drove back. But the thing is, when he walked in, all the other rock stars were like, it was like the Messiah walked in. They were all like, oh my God, that's Leland's. They were like little fangirls. It was great. But that's what kind of guy, he's just, he's a good friend anyway. I yeah. mean, aside from PR, we, you know, we you become a lot of, you, during this pandemic thing, you, you you make a lot of, you made a lot of friends and, and, and stayed with them, you know? Yeah, for it, sure. It was a different kind of bonding time. So yeah. And, and how how great. has the pandemic affected uh, your your line of work? Uh, it made it, honestly, I, I hate to say it, but we were busier than ever because people wanted to stay relevant, and all right. you could do is, is read, you know, read, think. I mean, watch or listen. You couldn't right. go out to live shows or anything like that. So. Of course, unless you lived in Florida, but <laughs> <laughs> good old Florida. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, we were busy, really busy. We had more clients than we ever have, you know, and, and we just built on that. So for us, it was great. Matter of fact, Jimmy and I, I, I think the pandemic might have been our fault because <laughs> I'll say, no, no, I'll explain. Because we always wish that people would just leave us alone, that we could sit in our room and work, you know, and not be bothered. And then all of a sudden there was a pandemic. So I kind of think it might have been our fault. You, you <laughs> got a little bit to do with it. Yeah, you guys definitely <laughs> jinxed it. It, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> you guys you know, made like, the pangolin come out in full there fury. <laughs> there you go. Can't say the new stuff yet. YouTube will remove us. <laughs> so, be careful. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> um, so the out of the 50 publications how how do you keep up with all of it like, well it's it, it, actually 87 now oh my god um, i'll tell you how i keep up with it it's called jimmy star <laughs> i write I, I do the interview or i write the article and then i press a little button in my email send it to jimmy and he submits them he keeps track of where when and how and who wants what and who wants to be in what i don't even I, if you ask me, like, you know, what magazines you write for, I could probably name 10, maybe. <laughs> That's but, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you you, uh, you actually got, got us a little article, and I believe it was Hollywood Digest, I want to say, or not Hollywood. Uh, let me pull this up real quick, because it's Oh, the one cool. today? Uh, well, there, there's the one today, the Influencer News Magazine, where we were named one of the best of best of 2021 for podcasts. And thank you so uh -huh. much. We love you. And there was another one, the Hollywood 411 news with a, like oh, a yeah, little yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was uh really cool. And I mean, it make, makes me feel like we're doing something. <laughs> well, you know what, without you guys, without your podcast, my clients wouldn't have anywhere to go. So we're very, we're very appreciative. And we're very thankful for all of you guys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've and made you guys are helping, really good. Helping. <laughs> yeah. I dude, I mean and I mean I have made like really good friends with, with some of them. I started working with some of them and I mean like I I started uh helping out in the Howard Bloom Institute. So that's been a lot I heard that. It's been I actually heard that. He's so happy. It's been a He's lot like, of fun. So I mean Howard Bloom was probably the smartest man on the planet. He's crazy. He's crazy. He's too smart for his totally. own good. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, in, in some in some ways, he's like the dumbest man in the whole world, and he knows it. And the thing is, you know, he was, he was like the best publicist in the world. 
You know, like he he represented every freaking artist in the eighties and seventies. Everyone, like from Bette Midler to except Anna Man. But Billy Idol, I mean, everybody. And then he hired us and we were like, oh my God, he's hiring us. <laughs> like, you know, when he hired us, I had to tell him, Howard, we're not that good. <laughs> 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 anyway, he's been with us almost two years now, so. <laughs> That's awesome. But, um, That's really cool. But you know what, when my, my clients tell, come back to me and, and they say, oh my God, those guys were crazy. Then I know it was a good show. <laughs> <laughs> yep yep we we uh we always try to keep that uh that uh energy that that uh attitude going or we just want to have fun get to know everybody's story and get to know them and what what they do and how they've achieved it all because a lot exactly. of people like to focus more so on the failures and nobody like worries about how they made it but people make it and it's awesome i, yeah. I like hearing them yeah 100 totally. so i totally. mean totally to, and, and to learn that you went from nursing school for and a nurse for three minutes to a Star Trek yes. medical journal, that that's pretty fucking pristine to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You have to have fun with your life and you have to you always have to take a chance, you know, because if you if you don't if you don't like take the risk, there's no possibilities, right? Exactly. So you gotta go. Hundred percent true. I, I I can't remember the uh the quote exactly from like NASA with the whole Apollo thing, uh, some, something about you have to overcome many failures to actually get the accomplishment achieved or I'm probably totally butchering that, but I know it's something along those lines with failure. It's like, I'm over here like, you, you gotta, you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. <laughs> I like that. I like the, I like the that dumbed down better. version. No, you, you just blew NASA was out of the water. If I even like remotely got it close. <laughs> or no, you know what? Now that I remember it, it's failure is not an option. So I was way off. Um, right. Probably thinking of something else now. That I, I love that. I, will, I never fail. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because when I do something and it doesn't work out the way i want it i learned from it so it's not a failure it's trial and error i mean you just gotta keep moving and it's it's yeah it's not a failure it's a learning experience it's it's a moment Absolutely. of moment totally. of lesson and growth Stand back up getting back on your feet yep mm -hmm. just, can't can't keep going up if uh, you don't go down at some point i mean maybe totally. some some people are definitely fortunate <laughs> to maybe do so well, like uh uh, I don't know, you know, Tesla, maybe e Elon's pretty, he's up there. <laughs> he just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's way cool. I mean, he's we've seen some one of these days I'm going to interview him just because I feel like it. <laughs> yeah, I, let me know if you do. I, I would definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let, let us know. <laughs> yeah. I will. <laughs> and, I, and I'm still on the hunt for the aliens. I mean, uh, I'm hoping we'll address them soon. They'll be out in the open. They'll want to come on the Minus Morning Show. We'll, we'll see what happens, but. Be awesome. Well, I'll be I, have, for that. I have a couple of aliens for you. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Send them over. <laughs> so, what uh, what was your your like passion about Star Trek? Did you were you like uh, are you are you a nerdy girl? No, not at all. I I can barely turn on a computer. Um, <laughs> no, I I had like a fangirl crush on on Leonard Nimoy or Spock. Oh, that, just watched that, watched it for the the crush. Yeah, I watched it, and by the way, out of all the celebrities, <laughs> he was my very first that I interviewed. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. That's so that, cool. That's so a big cool accomplishment. That? Yeah, that's a big that's first step. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it awesome. was. I remember sitting on the kitchen floor, and I had a tape recorder. That's how long ago it was. You know, a tape recorder, and <laughs> his publicist got on the phone and connected us. At, and I, I probably was never so nervous in my life. And I was never that nervous again either. But like your heart's pounding, it's like in your throat, you know that feeling. Right. But after talking to him for about two minutes, you know, all that went away and he was cool. And I, met, I wound up meeting him a couple of times. I wound up meeting his whole family, actually. Nice. <laughs> That's really cool. So is, is he uh, with the peace and prosper or? <laughs> He was a different kind of person. He was very, um, he was he was a nice person. He was very creative, and uh, he was born and raised in, in Boston. And his 
parents were very proper. He was a little sparkish. He was. He was, sparkish. <laughs> he was perfect for Spock because he was sparkish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Sparkish man. So out of, uh, you interviewed other people from Star Trek then, right? Who was your favorite or I actually, guess second favorite to Nimoy? Um, actually, I, I, I interviewed Michelle Nichols and I knew them all because we went to convention after convention. Nice. So I knew them all, but um, I, I really didn't interview too many. And after I interviewed Lennon Nimoy, I'm like, <laughs> how do you beat that? You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> At that point, you're all just, just their friends. You're like, I don't want to interview you. We're just hanging out. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember, um, you know, Lieutenant O'Hara, her um, son was playing in the Playboy Club. And we, like, <laughs> hung out with him. We, we wound up sharing, like, a room that night. You know, like you can't interview someone you're sharing a room with. You just can't. That doesn't work. <laughs> right. I'm about to go to bed. Oh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you this. The Forrest Kelly was a dick. <laughs> Forrest Kelly. Okay. Yeah. Bad. Bad. <laughs> Bad. Bad. So I, I, I can't imagine, and I've always wanted to know, but what is the Playboy Mansion like? Yeah. No, it wasn't, it, was in the, it wasn't in the mansion. It was in the Playboy Club, a hotel. Oh, oh. Wait, so how have you have ever existed? <laughs> <laughs> have you been to the mansion? I haven't. I haven't. Oh, damn. But, but, here's a but. I should have oh. been. <laughs> <laughs> but I should have been. <laughs> I, I believe it. I mean, yeah. you know, we, we, we see that body. You can rock it. You know what? I have a client. I have a client named um, Isabella, and, and she owns what's called a chateau. And the chateau is kind of like the Playboy Mansion, except all the models there walk around dressed as cats. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you scheduled her for us, so I'm excited because I, oh, I looked the at one. it. Yeah, I looked at it, and I was, uh, I was very I mean, intrigued. That's pretty- that's pretty close to the Playboy oh, Mansion. It, oh, is it Josh is like, is, is your girlfriend okay with this? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a little fireball, man. It, look, it looks like it. Yeah. So, oh, man. You, I, I, we seen that uh, you had met Flavor Flav. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was, I was scrolling through the pictures, and I was like, oh, she met Flavor Flav. <laughs> uh-huh. So how is he really? in real life with without cameras mm-hmm. and all he's so fun and so nice and so full of energy and exactly like he is on stage that's, that, yeah, that's what i, I kind of pictured it being that yeah I was, like, I was like please come on just <laughs> he's exactly that mm-hmm. that's nice. so funny and so oh man what would you you say would be like the the pinnacle of your your career or if if you've hit that yet like what what is when you like really sit there and like oh, I made yeah. it. <laughs> um, I think I did when I interviewed Adam Ann, but I I yeah. still have Billy Idol on my bucket list. I did do Rick Springfield twice, and he actually nice. came to me for an interview. <laughs> I didn't have to ask him. That was probably um, a feel good moment right there. <laughs> yeah. I was just <laughs> this is a funny one. I shouldn't tell anyone in Florida, but I will. I just I was just asked to interview Nancy Pelosi. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I bet that would go well. You know what? I'm not political, not at all, but she's doing a thing for AIDS, and I write for a gay magazine, so I might do it. I might, and I'm, I don't know. You know, I'm at on that one. First of all, it's like Saturday, and I'd have to fly to San Francisco. So I told them, look, if you guarantee me I'm going to interview her, I'll do it. But I don't right. want to interview anyone else. There. I don't want to interview the the governor of California. Who cares about him? You know? Just um, just ask her how how was the haircut? That's all. Okay. <laughs> That's all. I, I know nothing about him. I don't even know. What oh, she okay. Does. Well, then don't actually ask her that. That'll that'll okay. start it out really bad. Wait, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Everyone said to ask her about ice cream. Is that true? Is that true? Ice cream. Ice cream. I don't really know much about Yeah, that, that one goes over my head. I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that doesn't ring any bells. But no, I'm really, I'm, I'm like the least political person on the planet. Yeah, it, it's honestly more blissful okay. to be that way. So I feel, I feel good about myself. Yeah. <laughs> I, but I told them that. I said, listen, 
I am not a political journalist. I'm an entertainment journalist, and I, I won't ask her anything political. And they were okay with it. They were, yeah, maybe maybe yeah. she wants the other side. She wants people to see maybe. who she is without it. <laughs> yeah, that's a possibility. It's a, it's a thing for AIDS that they're doing. So, yeah, so okay, maybe. Like, well, uh, yeah, maybe I don't know. A lot of them stick, try to stick in some type of spotlight. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. I mean, so you've, uh, <laughs> so you, you, you travel to do your interviews. Is there, what's the coolest or craziest place you've traveled to, to do an interview? Ooh. Okay. Well, I did England overnight. Overnight. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> I went, I went on a Friday night and there's five hours ahead of New York. Mm -hmm. So I got there. I guess I got there Saturday morning. I stayed till Saturday night at 11 o'clock, got right back on a plane and went home. That was to see Adam. <laughs> wow. I oh, to see Adam. Not to, like, I'm doing whatever I need to. <laughs> Pretty much. And the, the crazy thing is, this is a crazy story. When I, when I met Adam the first time, it, it was very strange. It was during a meet and greet. And I figured, let me buy a ticket to the meet and greet because he never does them. But he, he was doing it for this one concert. I said, let me buy a ticket. I don't care how much it is. And then I'm going to ask him for the interview in person. So I, <laughs> I buy the ticket. Show's over. There's about 20 of us at the meet and greet. And he's on one side of the room and we're all on the other side. So now it's my turn. So I go up there. Now, he has an assistant named Adam Ross. And Adam Ross and I have been emailing I don't know, for like two years now. So I introduced myself and he like knew who I was and that was cool. And Adam was like gone. He was like nowhere to be found. All of a sudden he comes out from behind the stage and hugs me. Now, you know what? If he shook my hand, if it was a fast hug, you know, that would have been normal. But he hugged me for like what seemed like 10 minutes. And I was like, I don't even know how to act. What do I do? The spotlight was on. The music yeah. started <laughs> playing. <laughs> and then they gave us a ticket for him to sign. And I wasn't going to ask him to sign it, you know, but he took it out of my hand and he wrote, what, you know, how do you spell? He knew my name, but he's like, how do you spell your name? And I spelled it and he stopped in the middle. He goes, wait a minute. Your name's Eileen. I said, Yes, but if you don't like that name, you can call me anything. <laughs> and, and he says to his um, assistant, her name is Eileen. And I'm thinking, this is so weird. All right. You know what? <laughs> I said, no, no, you can call me anything you want. I don't care. <laughs> so he signed it and um, hugged me again. And it, it was like being in the toilet. Like, why? Why did that happen? <laughs> so I go, I go home and my friend calls me from England. Her name is Michelle, and she calls me. She said, they spelled your name wrong. I said, who? She goes, your, your um, review is on his album cover. And I'm not even comprehending what she's telling me. She goes, Adam did a CD and used your review from the night that you were there for one night. But they spelled your name as Ellen instead of Eileen. Then I got it. <laughs> That's so. Said, oh. So he put out a, he put out a whole CD and on, and had your review on it. Uh, yeah, he had like a you know ex excerpts from certain yeah. interviews or certain reviews, and he had mine, and nobody told me. Nice. I wanted that's to find so like twenty nice of them, but <laughs> that's, so that's cool. But he, he did that's spell cool. my name wrong, but but it was for Get Out magazine, so you know everybody knew it was me. So. What do I care? I mean, you know, this, <laughs> this to me was almost as good as an interview. Right. Yeah, that's on, awesome. On his album jacket, you know? I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> yeah, no, that's super cool. I mean, I mean, not many people can say that. So <laughs> yeah, I get I get excited seeing what you what you write about us in the, the interviews. So I, I can only imagine. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. And uh yeah, I oh, man. Now that I'm thinking about it, because uh, you mentioned the Get Out magazine and and it being, um, so I, I also uh, started working with with Dante's Dante's Alexander. And oh, he's that, amazing. That that's that's been a lot of fun. I uh, it, actually we got well by the time the viewers hear this, uh, we will have <laughs> a game out for him that <laughs> I helped him make. So that was 
that's a lot of fun. So yeah, yeah, the, you, the, the trail is out. Too. Yeah, if you guys ever need a, a game, let me know. We'll we'll make a, a little badass Eileen like just fighting and a side scroll <laughs> something. Fighting people to get interviews, I'd play it. <laughs> oh man, I want you to make a Jimmy Star game. He would die for that. <laughs> Let, let's do it. Let me know. <laughs> I'm, I'm wow. more than, more than do happy. you do that? That is so cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a nerd. I, I'm I'm techie. <laughs> yeah, oh, I want a Jimmy Star game. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Let's do it. And he can like he can like fight Ron or something or beat up Ron. <laughs> I'm I'm down. Always. I could down. write. I could put some writing effort into it. I got you. There you go. Yay. Yeah. He's he's a Dakota is a self published author. I really? Am. Yeah, I am. He's being very <laughs> modest over here. Just like very modest. All right, so, <laughs> so let me turn you this know. interview around. Ready? Oh, I knew it was coming Dakota, as soon as you said it. Tell me about your book. <laughs> what kind of book did you write? Uh, it's a sci-fi. It's the first in a series I've been working on. Uh, it's called Barnard's Galaxy Descendants of Legacy. And it uh, alternates between two alien species and just kind of goes through their histories and they eventually meet up. Um and then I have four more that are written that just need to be edited, but they're they alternate. There's you should probably so you, send yeah, me yeah, one and fun. I'll review it for you. I would absolutely love to do that. <laughs> oh, dude, he's yeah. blushing. Yeah, he's a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> I'll put it in, I'll I'll put it in a lot of publications. <laughs> there you go. That'd be totally. Awesome. I appreciate that. Totally. It's, it's a and Josh, point. what about you? What do you do? I just, you know, I make games, I talk to people and that's yeah. about it I, I'm, a, I'm a stay at home dad so i i just uh hang out with the, are you really yes yeah, I, I hang out with my daughter most of the time uh my wife works from home she's uh she's actually a, a, a nurse as well um, whoops <laughs> yeah <laughs> whoops. <laughs> yeah uh, but she, she i mean she's she's got it pretty easy she's uh, not easy i wouldn't say she she she'd slap me if she heard that um <laughs> no nursing is not easy it works hard no hard. no not at all but i mean it is nice that she does get to like just hang out sit sit in her office with her little robe on in the house and <laughs> so yep oh, I, fun. I i have a uh pretty boring life yeah. how old's your daughter she's two how cute yeah he's adorable she, she's <laughs> she's all right she gets it from mommy not me so yeah looking I at me her. you would oh sorry yeah sorry viewers <laughs> listeners um yeah she's she's a little fireball she's crazy she gets that from me she she gets her attitude from me and the good looks from the mom so <laughs> so where are you in florida the heart of hell itself orlando <laughs> Uh, oh I like, my god, you're right in Disney World. Uh, yeah, well, I used to work at Disney World for seven years and hated every bit of it. <laughs> As what? Were you like the character? Oh, god, <laughs> he, he man, walked I around wish. as Mickey Mouse the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was so. I know. I, so first off, at Disney, I, I worked as a HVAC technician. So I I did uh, all the air conditioners, all the kitchen equipment. Um. But, so you are good. Yeah. Yep. I was but saying, I, he's being I, modest. He was one of the a lot of things. <laughs> he was one of the princesses that walked around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, you'd be surprised. So when I did work at Universal, I tried so hard to be a character, and there was only one character that my height was able to fit, and they could only give me uh it's Rocky or Bullwinkle, whichever one's a tall moose. Winkle, I think, right? No, it's Rocky. I don't know. No, <laughs> that, Rocky, I don't know. Rocky's a little tiny squirrel. That's okay, I, I should have just stuck with my gut. I had it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Bullwinkle. Um, but they already had like two, three people. They didn't need anybody else. So I was like, all right, well, it won't be a character. Fine, I'll just play games. <laughs> so I literally ran the little carnival games around Jaws, and that was it. <laughs> there you go. I love it. And Jaws is there no longer. It's so sad. <laughs> so it's it was nice to be a part of it but yeah no uh, okay. disney uh universal was a lot nicer to work for than disney i, I will say that really oh yeah by a long shot <laughs> I love disney World. yeah love it. It, it it's it's nice if 
you don't work there otherwise yeah, the magic yeah. just kind of goes way out the, <laughs> the window ma- the magic gets stripped away <laughs> yeah but i mean living living in orlando it's it's crazy because we have we're like the heart of tourists for like almost all of the world and so traffic's crazy like i yeah i, I bet i used to work in the mornings like 4 a.m. I'd have to wake up and drive out to work. It was so nice because nobody's on the road. I could get to work in 15 minutes. I'm like, what? Any other time I was working during the day, I'm like taking an hour, almost two hours just to get home because traffic wow. just uh... <laughs> Yeah, I'll say my, my yeah, work's well, about to be five You don't live away. in LA or New York, so you cannot even say a word until oh, you've been no. in there. I used to live in uh, California and was close to LA and I wasn't old enough to drive, but man, I remember my parents driving and being in stop and go traffic for hours and it was yeah. the worst. Oh, I hated it. <laughs> I hated <Yeah>. it. <laughs> I, Listen, I, Dorothy, I'd rather live there than Kansas. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I didn't bash on California, all right? All right I'm still in California. Well, I'm not from heart. California, so go right ahead. <laughs> Everyone welcome my new co-host, Dorothy. Dorothy, uh, <laughs> Dorothy or uh, Dakota for short or long. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, no, Dakota, I. Dakota, did you ever see a cyclone? Did you, uh, not yet. I've only been here since last August, so I just moved. Up Can you here do me a favor? Colorado, so what? <laughs> Go take a picture. Record, like... record one when it happens. <laughs> no, I want you to call me while one's going on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like FaceTime me so I could watch it. <laughs> All right. As I'm <laughs> the members. roof rips off. I gotta go. <laughs> I've been I've been here once. There was one so far where there was like a warning and, and my girlfriend Jordan called me and she was at work and she's like, grab the dogs and go into the laundry room, shut the door. And I'm like sitting here playing video games, like, what's going on? <laughs> she's like, Have you not looked outside? I go look and I was like, Oh yeah, that looks pretty scary. <laughs> so, well next time, next time call me just yeah, in case. Yeah, next time, next time when after I get I always want sorted, you to be a storm like, chaser. Yeah. How cool is that? They it look cool. Be. It would be. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but unless I got like a super souped up Batmobile. No. Nah. I just it just always reminds me of that movie Twister. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The cow getting sucked in. That's that is the iconic moment I always remember. <laughs> it, so speaking of Twister, I think that's like the closest and thing I've ever had to actually experiencing uh, a tornado because like I don't they used to have like a little walk by show it was cool but like they made like this artificial tornado and it was just it was loud crazy and a lot of stuff happens and I was just like blown away with the first time I seen it because I was like man I would never <laughs> want to be in a real one <laughs> yeah no surprisingly actually where I was before in Colorado we when I was in high school we had one in the town over which was like it never happened but there was one that hit down in the town over and that one yeah that was pretty freaky i was i was out at lunch and driving and everybody had to stop driving and pull over because there was <clears throat> there was so much hail coming down you couldn't see anything so we had to like pull over That's and then cool. finally we got back to school and everybody was like hunkered down hanging out <laughs> it was yeah so i, 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 I guess i've new, experienced part of a new, tornado we had one in new york once what it was a weird thing yeah. it was yeah we had a tornado we had an earthquake in new york once Wow. See, that's what I'm used to from California was earthquakes waking up from just rocking back and forth. Those were yeah. <laughs> those were fun. Waking up to my dad run, running into the room to get us to go and like stand underneath the bat like the ceiling right there in the bathtub. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. I've never been uh, I'm man, I am so thankful. I've never had to deal with any crazy thing. We just deal with hurricanes, but like that's nothing to me. Like us florida boys we go outside during hurricanes <laughs> i love hurricanes we go outside we had some we have some really cool ones yeah i yeah. mean like the eye of the storm them. is the best See? it's so cool because <laughs> like you, you know scary it, it is dude because it's like dead quiet like you hear everything like out in the distance around but everything like sent center is calm and quiet it's pretty eerie but I, love it. <laughs> I, bet. <laughs> yeah. I bet yeah I, I and I was I was gonna mention I, I have driven in New York and I actually made the mistake of renting a car to drive through all five boroughs and <laughs> quickly regretted it <laughs> I bet yeah quickly but I bet. Uh, and, and speaking of tornadoes I think uh 
the the best the best story I heard, the craziest one I heard was from Mike Becerra, actually. The the one he Oh he my hit. god. He like lost <laughs> his house. Everything. Yeah, he lost Jeez. like his entire house except the closet he was in. I was just like yeah. <laughs> like when he was telling me the story, like I was all clenched up tight, like sweating, like, oh my God. Like as if I didn't know he was gonna make it out alive because you know, here I am talking to him, but like <laughs> he, he he told the story so like intensely. I was like, Oh my god. It's, no, thank you. <laughs> I would never yeah. want to deal with that. So, he just he just so. got back into a house. So. Yeah, good. Well, hopefully, yeah. uh, no tornadoes, you know, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, man. So what, what what do you do on your spare time when you're not busy and, and finagling with all these interviews and oh, everything yeah, you got to write? Let me tell you something, okay? So no I have clients time. in England. Their 9 o'clock is our 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then I have clients in L.A who don't think anything of calling me two, three in the morning because it's so early to them. Oh, so if I get, <laughs> there is no free time. There is just and you none. answer these calls at two or three a.m.? <laughs> I do, because they might need me. Oh, yeah. You know what? A You're lot of them sweet. are like, I was gonna say, she's too nice. like children, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they want to be reassured. Yeah. Scott Page and Soho Johnny during the pandemic called every single night scott would call about 12 a.m and johnny would get on the other line and they would both call me and we would facetime to all hours of the night <laughs> That's every insane. single day oh i don't God. know how you do that that is incredible yeah but yeah. you know what my clients became all my friends during this pandemic than clients for sure you know you, you just we all became so close because you know what i would never facetime with scott during a regular day <laughs> but during the pandemic you know three four times he would call right. he was bored you know so yeah so i would just put the phone on, on the front porch or something just go ahead write do what i was doing and he would just talk it was cool that's funny <laughs> so funny were you ever just like not today. I need to get some sleep. Yeah. Like answer, answer real quick, yeah. guys. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I would talk for a while sometimes. And then, like, if they started to talk politics, that was it. Bye, boys. <laughs> Not interested. I, I, I can see that. That makes yeah. total sense. So, yeah. out of, I mean, you, you do all this writing. Do you ever have time to, like, read? Do you like reading? Or... Nah, I don't read. It's boring, okay. <laughs> and I never read what I write either. And once I write it, I, I give it to Jimmy, and I don't even want to look at it anymore. Um, I'm not a reader. I'm not. Um, I feel that. If I have to review a book, I'll I'll read it, or at least most of it. But I'm not a reader. I'd rather listen to music. I'd rather. I have also. I I happen to have nine grandchildren that oh, all wow. live within 10, oh, yeah which, which all live within 10 minutes of my life oh, no. so, <laughs> so on top of all of the clients you have all of the grandchildren as well <laughs> yeah matter of fact I'm, i have a 12 year old gabriel and he's like really smart really smart mm -hmm. and i'm gonna make an interview yeah you know he plays he, he plays like those games and stuff and so yeah, yeah. We're, we're I have game nerds. Everyone, 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 you guys interview. I'm sorry, what? Oh, oh, I think we you let you lagged on us. <laughs> oh, she's back. Are we good now? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah, no, I <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's all right. I said he interviews everyone that you interview. Oh, excellent. Oh, awesome. <laughs> is this is this Gabe? Gabe ah yeah i've seen him <laughs> looking <laughs> when i would do uh some research i would usually type in their names and then i i see the kid interviewing them and i was like now how the hell did he get <laughs> so now it makes sense <laughs> hey listen you, you know the rapper molly mall mm -hmm. okay. he's an interview with him tomorrow <laughs> nice that's awesome <laughs> That's so yeah, cool. The, kid, the little kid's got the hookup. All right. Yeah. The, the, the incredible Gabe. 
Is yeah. It the Incredible or the Amazing Game? I know it's one of them. Maybe. <laughs> so I'm gonna let him interview you. Yeah, for sure. We I'll I'll go on his show. Yeah, yeah you Let's should. <laughs> he gets he gets really cool numbers. One more, one last question, and then you can ask me anything you want. All right, ready? All right, here yeah. we go. Do you know like it's like almost ten o'clock at night? So why mindless mornings? Why not mindless <laughs> midnight? <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> he likes he likes to think that people yourself. listen in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I do release them in the morning, but I myself am not at all a morning person. And actually, our we do have an interview on Sunday. We're interviewing uh, some people from Venezuela, and so we we do have to like be up early in the morning. So it's actually going to be our first real morning interview, but. Um, we did at one point in time have a mindless midnight and that was when Nick and I would only because uh, for a while we would only just do me and Nick just going back and forth with with nonsense and then we started bringing guests and that was our midnight section and then we were like all right let's just merge them together it's all mindless morning show and and just continue on with the branding and uh, yeah that's uh maybe poor branding on my end <laughs> <laughs> but it works out because i mean like i said i, I just released them like first thing in the morning like 4 a.m in the morning apparently there's like a really good time when to release podcasts and when not to is that true yeah I, well i mean the internet tells me so yeah i, yeah, I was gonna say the internet tells us that <laughs> No. Well, you shouldn't believe everything you see on the internet. <laughs> I, I've been told this lately, and I'm I don't understand why. Are you Are you telling me I I can't grow four more inches <laughs> if I take this pill? Um, <laughs> no, so <laughs> bad, Josh. That was dumb. <laughs> you're forgiven. You're 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 coming up on almost a, a year of your your book with Adamant. Um, the, what was it? I forgot the book name now. Waiting for Adam. Yeah. Wait, wait, waiting for Adam. So coming up on almost a whole year. Uh -huh. how, does that, how does that feel? It's okay. I mean, <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> has, it, has it seen like a lot of success or, or brought in anything? I mean, the book is selling. I haven't done a book tour, but I'm going to. And the follow-up book should come out depending on if I get an interview with Billy Idol around the same time, you know, during the summer or maybe a little later, September. Nice. And it's called Waiting for Billy. So are you going to come to Orlando for your book tour? Uh-huh. Absolutely. Yes. You got to let me know. Yeah, I guess totally. I'm, I'm going to have to fly out then. Yep. We'll, we'll have to <laughs> formally meet as well. If you can guarantee me a tornado, I'll come to Kansas. <laughs> I can get. I'll have to. I'll have to do some research and see. Just Come go out on, there and do God. like the little rain yeah. dance. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, I would be really fucking impressed if you could summon a tornado, dude. <laughs> but, dude Me I, too. I'd, I'd be oh doing bigger God. and better things if I could summon tornadoes, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Well. Well, I mean, yeah, him and I, Dakota and I have never actually met, but we play video games together almost every day. Who wins? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we, we play on teams. We're teammates. Yeah, yeah, we're teammates. Oh, you should play with Gabe. He's really good. What does he play? Yeah, Please probably, tell me Fortnite. Probably carry us. I don't know. I don't uh, know. Prob probably Fortnite if he's around yeah. that age. He does play Fortnite, but I think he doesn't <laughs> love Fortnite. I think he plays different things. I wouldn't even know like where to begin. Oh, we're looking, we're looking for new games, anyways. Yeah, this is true. Oh, we're, <laughs> we've been playing it way too much to where we're getting kind of sick of it. So, um, so when do you play chess? His brother's a chess master. Oh man, Ooh. I've I suck at it. I've tried. Can, I can play it if like I'm on a phone app or something, and it tells me what the pieces can do. Yeah, I was gonna say I know the whole. <laughs> in an L shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't remember what how pieces move. So unless it's like pre-programmed and tells me I can only do this or that, then I can play it. Whether or not I'll 
be any good. That that's a different story. I have no clue. I thought that was a checkers board, not chess. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> you guys play. Um, I don't know what he plays. It, he's pretty good at all of them. Yeah. No, we'll definitely I mean, have. Yeah. We'll have to link up. Play. They never not play. So I, I will be <laughs> sure to watch my language around Gabe. Oh. <clears throat> Oh yeah. He's cool. <laughs> I don't want to get uh get get grandma in trouble with with the, the <laughs> mom like who did you just like give my kids information to? <laughs> you know you know what the same thing is. All my none of my kids are cool. They're not. One <laughs> I brought them to anime concerts when they were like eight years old. You know, I brought them to everywhere and, and one has a bun and she's a librarian that's gabe's mother and the other one doesn't have a bun all the time but sometimes and she's a social studies teacher and then oh, i have goodness. a son he's a little cool he's a little cool he's a little cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> a little cool. <laughs> he has tattoos you know okay oh, and shaves his head so he's, he's that, also a teacher that was so funny was, yeah my kids aren't cool <laughs> like, I don't know where I went wrong. I really tried. Is that because, though, like you had to change their diapers and deal with them for so long? Or is it just like they really aren't that cool? <laughs> you know what? Like they went to concert after concert. You know, I used to wake them up at, at like when they were 10 years old for a driving lesson, like at three in the morning. Mm. I was like a cool mother, and they just didn't turn out cool. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm still trying to find That's what amazing. I did wrong. Uh, oh, well, why aren't please, you cool? Yeah, <laughs> let me know when you do because I definitely want to make sure my daughter is as cool as I think yeah. I am. So <laughs> she turns out cool. <laughs> I mean, I give her a little controller to play games with. I mean, she seems like she's keeping it cool. I don't she know. seems pretty cool so far, dude. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, well, you know what? They rebel when they're about I don't know, fifteen. <sighs> I'm so scared for so, that. Like I'll, I'll be like 40 by then. So like I'm I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> not well, at all. She'll take the controls and throw it at you and say I'm done. Then right. you know you're in trouble. <laughs> it's your turn, Dad. <laughs> that, that's fine. My, my my wife is Spanish. I'm used to the like the sandals being thrown at me. So <laughs> being chased around with a uh, pot and pan or whatever. <laughs> What's so, your uh, her name is Mila. I knew it would be a cool name. See, she's half right. cool. She's already got a cool name. You're so, halfway there. what would you have thought of the name Mazakine? That's a cool name too. <laughs> Demon from that, Lucifer. That, that's that's what I tried to name our daughter, and my wife just said no. <laughs> is, is this because you've been a fan of Lucifer? Is that why you wanted to name Dude, her? Dude, the, the show is so amazing. And May, <laughs> like, and they call her Maze for short, and yeah, I thought Maze. that was cute, but. She's just a badass. <laughs> I agree. She, she, she just wasn't going for it. Plus, I was like, how many other kids are going to be out there named Mazakine? Like, we're going to name her Mila, and how many fucking Milas is she going to meet? Like, I hate my name. Josh is everywhere. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> I mean, a you have a pretty guys. generic name. <laughs> yeah, and Dakota's real name. Go ahead, Dakota. My real name is Elijah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, Super Elijah cool. Dakota. He's got, yeah, he's got Dakota's two middle rare middle. names. Like, how is that yeah. any fair? <laughs> you know what? I, I have a very I good friend that's it. named Dakota, but she's a drag queen. So I tried it once, so I wasn't made for it. Uh, <laughs> what, what was it? The heels? What was it? It was. I, I have trouble walking in heels. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Dorothy. Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost like a, a dark side, Dorothy. Dorothy. Yes. Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like it. Oh, man. Well, so how did you guys meet? Like playing a game? <laughs> uh, initially, I believe yeah. it was the, the podcast. Uh, the uh, We have a, a big podcast community on Discord, and there's so many different podcasters uh, within there. And... Uh, yeah, we, we just started day, talking. Like, hey, somebody man, said they said something about gaming, and I was like, yo, I game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Wow. And like every day after that, just about it is we're, I mean, probably for months. Yeah, a couple, yeah, couple hours each day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so. cool. Yeah, like yeah, that. it's been it's been fun. <clears throat> it's unfortunately going to end soon because I'm going to have to go back to work, but 
get it in when I can. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm sorry. But, I, I know it's so hard being a stay-at-home dad, not having like any like super real responsibilities. I could be like, hey, I'm at my job or something. Like, I, I man, you're yeah. you're a stay-at-home dad, and I'm about to be a go-away dad since I'm gonna be at a daycare. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He, he, he works these daycares like just dealing with a bunch of kids so at least you get to give them back though that's yeah, true that's i don't have to take them home that's right that's right i give that's them my true. psychotic dog <laughs> <laughs> man, i have a I, psychotic dog yeah. yeah uh man i i think i seen it on instagram is it like the little wiener dog yep Oh, he's so oh, cute. He's so, so sleepy. <laughs> he's like, what? I just woke her up. <laughs> Am I on TV? <laughs> Are you showing me off again? Okay, cool. That's a pretty, That's her. really pretty print, too. I love its uh, coat. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going to like its spots. I'm going to like do them pink and stuff. I, th- I think she'll be really cool. <laughs> I, oh, man. I can't wait to see that. That You got to see that on Instagram. There's those hairstylists that do like dog hair they just like cut dogs hair and they make them like look crazy yeah, yeah. one they like Those made poodles. the one dog turn into like a zebra or something and it was so happy running out there <laughs> it's, it's oh, like i just always yeah. wanted to be a zebra <laughs> <laughs> i wonder if dogs I like make her a zebra that's a I good idea if dogs understand that like if they know like hey look at me now <laughs> Ooh, I think I that they know, know, they know exactly pretty. what a zebra is but i'm sure it was probably like look at me <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever painted the dog's toenails yet? Um, I haven't, but I'm teaching her. They say if you, if you like, teach her. her paws and and get her used to that, mm. that when I'm ready to paint them, she'll let me. Yeah, I, I can't even clip my dog's nails. Like, oh, Anna they hates it. Freak mm-hmm. out. Yeah, no he's terrified. I'm trying to like get him used to it. Like they they're cool with giving me their paw. Like. I say paw, they'll give me their paw and like mm-hmm. I can hold their hand, shake their hands, dance with them, whatever. They don't care. <laughs> Second I got those clippers in my hand though, they're like, yo, get the fuck away from me, bro. Him. That's, <laughs> yep, yep. So. Onyx will paw at me and hit me and do all the stuff and I'll grab him, he's fine, and then I have to pull the thing out and it's like and he's like, and runs away. <laughs> like I'll have oh, to like I, I have to yell at him, get in the corner, and then I finally do it and he looks at me and I'm like, That's not so bad, right? And he's like, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to teach Fiona to give me her paw. She gave me the middle finger. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> Fiona. So are you a Shrek fan or where did that name come from for you? Because one of my grandchildren are called Serafina. We call her little Fee. She wanted the, the dog named after her. So I named the dog Fiona. We call them both little Fee now. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Serafina. That's a very unique name. I don't think yeah, I've ever heard that. Mm-hmm. yeah it's so, interesting i like mm-hmm. it yeah cool. I, I, i'm gonna have to get with my mom and see if i can get my name changed or something <laughs> <laughs> I'm, tired, I'm tired of this josh shit i don't think you need your mom's permission to do that but you know. you're right i don't <laughs> you don't do you but have a middle name i do and it's another generic ass name what, what is what is it robert josh robert huh well, you know, mom, you mom dad, did you guys even try? <laughs> yeah, we can we can switch. I'll, we can give you one of mine. Yeah, take Robert. one of the coders name. <laughs> so Eli- I, Elijah I, Robert. I kind of always wanted to be called Leroy. I, and actually, we yeah. when I worked at Toys R Us long ago, I had already worked with four other Joshes. So I was like, can you guys just change my name tag to Leroy? And they're like. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, cool. Call me Leroy too on the radio, everything. I'm not going to respond to Josh anymore. I'm done with it. And I'm yeah, it. So for like the year I worked there, dude, I, I was Leroy. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. I love it. Did you like that? You should. Did you like it? I, 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 That's it. I love it. I mean, I don't know what I would change my name to now, though, if I think about it. Because really, it was it was more so a gag at the... Uh, Leroy Jenkins thing. Leroy <laughs> yeah. Jenkins. So I don't know what I would want to be called. But well, I, I think I'm going to change Facebook my name. We'll, we'll have someone name you. That's a good idea. Yeah, just start a start a whole trend. Just having people see what name works the best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. see what you get. So <laughs> listeners, viewers, um, comment. Let me know what I should name myself. Uh, yeah. Yes. Hashtag, hashtag rename Josh. Yeah. I mean, 
and nobody come at me with like some friend style shit. Like I'm not naming myself Princess Banana Hammock or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't look at those four I just sent you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or or uh, what was it? Her 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 boyfriend Paul Rudd at the at the time had named himself Crap Bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, you named yourself Princess Banana Hammock. I'm now Crap Bag. Oh, aren't you going to introduce me? Hi, I'm Crap Bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Crap Bag. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I think it'd be, I think it'd be really great. I yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do you it. Get places. Do it. I, I wonder the name what would stand out so much. It. But honestly, like, who cares what? Like, and then if you kept one of them, if you kept your middle name, it'd be Crap Bag Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably keep my middle name just because it, it's uh, actually both my dad's names. Oddly enough. Um, it, no, my dad's not gay and, and I wasn't Bert. adopted. No, it was <laughs> my my mom's ex, who is my biological dad. He was Robert. And then she remarried to another Robert. Oh, so oh Robert. I was I was going with one named Rob and the other was Bert. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah, Who's she married to now? Robert. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the second Robert, Robert or okay. just, just the yeah. second Robert not another Robert <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> what, what is your taste in men they need to be named Robert <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a requirement they need to have the Bert and the Rub yeah I don't that's know so I, funny. I don't know if like she says it was just coincidence um maybe my my brother Ethan you know Ethan his yeah. uh his wife's name is Jessica, and he had an ex-girlfriend before that that was also named Jessica, so we always gave him the, the same crap, too. And it was coincidence, but <laughs> it's still funny. He did yeah. a good name, too. Yeah, it's, you're going to laugh. You know what his name, you guys? Uh, really good. His, wait, well, his middle name's Alan. I don't know. <laughs> so his name's Ethan Allen. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> and my, my dad claims it was before the furniture store. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, I Are was, there any more of you? Uh, I have uh, one more brother, an older brother. Yeah. Yeah. Name Cody, Cody Mitchell. See, they're all great names. Yeah. My dad. My dad said that we are all Western, except for Elijah. For me, he claims my mom switched that to my first name when he wasn't paying attention or something. I'm like <laughs> Dakota Elijah. Just to sound weird, Elijah Dakota sounds so much better. <laughs> Ed. Ed. I love it. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Uh, two sisters they got the cool names well kind of one got cool names her name is ashton that's um, pretty yeah but the other one and honestly i don't even remember her her middle name <laughs> you're like i don't even remember her name i was like what <laughs> no no <laughs> my, <laughs> it's been that long huh <laughs> my my other sister her her name is abigail but her middle name my mom went so hippie with this. She named her her middle name Rain, but with a Y, so it's like fancy. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, nice. okay. <laughs> okay, and you got Josh Robert. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, cool. I mean, at that point, I would have taken Josh Rain, so. Well, my mom claims I was named after uh, the biblical Josh, but um, I had come later come to find out I was really named after Josh White, who was a pro BMXer. Nice. Nice. I'm okay with it. I, I suppose. She did not want you to become a BMXer, and that's why she told you it was a biblical Josh. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I don't even know. I have no idea. It, just, just need a better reasoning, I guess. <laughs> what, what, Eileen? What's your middle name? Yeah. I hate my middle name. Beth. B e t h. Beth. Beth. Not even like short for anything. Just Beth. Not even like Elizabeth. Just Beth. Bethany. Bethany. There you go. Change yeah. it to Bethany. I can, like that. You know any Beth. Bethany. Yeah. This is it. Tonight we're all changing our names, and we're going to call each other that name forever and ever. <laughs> so, so the next, the next time we get you on the show, we'll all have different names and introduce yes. ourselves with our new names. <laughs> yes. I, I'm seriously like, if I don't have to go through a whole bunch of legal loopholes, I might seriously consider changing my name right now. You just, I think you just have to pay a fee and sign paperwork, man. I, <laughs> I think, think that's, that's actually correct. I think that's you know all what? it is. Let's all research it in our own states and see who yeah, states. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> see what state it's in easier. Go take a trip. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. 
There we go. It, well, it's settled. Eileen, you are helping me change my name. Thank you so much. I wonder how my I'm wife's going to take this too. news. Yeah, you're going to go awesome. tell her. We're going to walk I, right I out of the room like, I'm changing I love my your name. name, Josh. <laughs> she only calls me babe. It doesn't matter. She's like, I forgot your name, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, well, I, I, I got to say, Eileen, it has been such, such a pleasure having you. I, I've been looking so forward to meeting you and i'm so happy to have had you on and i'm so you sorry you guys are a blast yeah i i'm, I'm so sorry that awesome. uh the first time we had you scheduled i had to reschedule because my stupidity and time management um i won't apologize because oh wait a minute it. was that you uh-oh that was him <laughs> the jigs <laughs> up <laughs> <laughs> that, that was me she probably she probably got a note by my name Fuck this guy. <laughs> it's all right, though. I'm going to be changing my name, so I'm totally different now. Yeah, so it's not even Josh anymore. <laughs> make, make sure you change it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, it and uh, it, it's just so nice talking to you. you. You're a great person, and, I mean, the amount of work that you put out and what you do, it, it's inspiring, Seriously. really. Really. It's well, incredible. thank you. Again, and I don't know were, how you do and it. And you were a great person until I <laughs> until about two seconds ago. <laughs> no, you well, guys I wasn't are great. Part of that. <laughs> you guys are great. I love your show. Give me more dates. I have more clients. And, uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And um, cool. just uh, before we go, is there anything you'd like to say to our, our viewers, listeners? Any words of wisdom? Yeah. Watch, watch this show. Oh, you know why? Because the next time you watch it, you'll be watching two different, <laughs> totally different people with different names. <laughs> this is true. And, yeah. and for the viewers out there, I want everyone to write in your suggestion for a name. Let's let's see how cr creative you could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I I, yeah, I like that. I mean, could I'd we like do a see. contest? We could. I don't know how. But I'm all for it. The, you make the person that wins, the person whose name that you choose, you make them a game. Ooh. Or I oh, could yeah. tattoo them their name on, on myself. There you go. <laughs> All right. That's, I, I feel like that was a lot more, but okay. Sometimes I just find that a little bit easier. You know, I can just be like, yeah, cool. It's Sketch a lot another. easier to write that on there than it is to make a game. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, we anyway, can. Anyway, I, I, I want to thank you guys. You guys are funny. You're great. Thank you. You're thank actually you. smart, and um, <laughs> and I need a Jimmy Star game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, we Josh, get on that. We yeah, we will be emailing about the many things that we talked about today. <laughs> yeah, hey, for real. But I I will Wait, give you oh. the rest of the night to deal with Scott Page and and Adam. So. It's almost that time. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, and I'll make sure I'll make sure you're the first person to know there's a tornado dropping down in Kansas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yes. And as always, everyone, all right, guys, you all have a great night. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Stay mindless, everyone. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Mindless Morning Show. We appreciate you picking us out of the many great podcasts out there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell to get notified whenever we release a new episode or bonus content. Now go enjoy the rest of your mindless day.